transform your product idea into a business reality. My name is Callie Keen, and this is End Hype. Is it time for you to quit your job and become your own boss? That's kind of the allure. That's the that's the you know that's the vision. That's the uh, the mountain that we want to climb. You know, I talk to a lot of people that are thinking about making this step, or people that have dipped their toes in the water as a contractor or a freelancer, and they're thinking, hmm, maybe I, maybe I do want to do this, or maybe I want to sign up for that innovation challenge and just go crazy and create a high growth startup. Uh, is it time for you to move on and create that next chapter in your life? Is it time for you to be your own boss? So America has 25 million people running their own business. They're, they're running it. They started it. That's a lot of people with businesses. Now, a lot of those businesses fail. Something like 700,000 plus of them fail uh, their first year, but they're constantly being regenerated. Right. And there's a there's an interesting perception and this is perpetuated by social media, magazines and news, really by a lot of survivor bias. There there's this perception that entrepreneurship and startups are all young disruptive teams and they're dominating the business world. They're all, you know, I quit school, I'm 20 years old, and I have a billion-dollar company. Remember what we say, and this is the end hype piece of this, is that it's news because it's newsworthy, and it's newsworthy because it's rare, right? The routine reality is that most businesses are started by people in their late 30s into their 40s. The average age of entrepreneurs is like 40 to 42, depending on the year. And uh, most businesses are started by seasoned, experienced employees that want to create a change in their life. And that's the most common thing that I hear from people. And I hear it in a lot of different ways, right? But it all boils down to maybe they want to make a change in the world, but they definitely want to make a change in their life. What makes somebody want to leave a job and create a business? Why take on the work, the risk, and the stress. I mean, some people are just wired differently. Some people uh, are highly competent, but basically they're unemployable, right? There's a lot of people, they're just not built to be employees. Maybe they struggled through it in their 20s or they, they never really got to apply the talents that they have, their personality, what they could really do. They never really fit into that, that shape. And uh, once they start their own business, they realize that they're unemployable. But some people just need to push themselves. They have that desire to constantly be pushing and growing. And they can't uh, just stay in the confines of what's defined for them. Now, I, I personally, I've worked with a lot of defense and tech entrepreneurs. Uh, these are smart people. They've left extremely well-paying jobs, right, to go out on their own. But why? Why? So before we talk about this, I just, before I go over the reasons that I've heard and the thoughts that uh, we've walked people through, uh, you know, either through coaching startups or just working with entrepreneurs developing products, it's like, getting to the mindset piece before we know is it time to quit your job and be your own boss I want to explore with you why other people do it because why is going to last longer than the if and when and how and all those other pieces right the why is the core so one of the main reasons is that Corporate careers have diminishing returns, right? By the time an engineer, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on engineers because that's uh, 
who I predominantly deal with is highly technical people. It might be a software engineer, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer. But by the time an engineer hits senior engineer or engineer manager, uh, that smart person starts to realize that the next level of advancement, of achievement, requires them getting an MBA or certifications and doing less of what them made them choose engineering in the first place. So it's like, hey, congratulations, you're really good at your job. Now start doing this other job and leave the thing that you thought that you liked, which if you haven't ground out of you, I'm going to ground out of you now because now you're going to become a VP of engineering or you're going to have some other role that doesn't involve actually making cool stuff anymore, which was apparently your original mission and passion. Uh, in other cases, employees spend years working on subsystems, little pieces of big projects, or they create very focused specializations. Like, I only do this little tiny niche of a niche of a niche thing, and they do it over and over and over again. The work becomes monotonous, becomes routine. They become really good at it, so that's what they get to do. Uh, but the skill acquisition and learning is low. The feeling of impact is low. And uh, that means that the feeling of fulfillment is low. Um, people I speak with, they just thought life was going to be different. That's what it really boils down. Uh, they started a career with the desire to do something that was worthwhile, something that they could be proud of, that other people would be proud of, something that was worth talking about, that was memorable. Um, maybe their goal was to earn, you know, the big money. Maybe their goal was to make really cool stuff. But in general, people are unhappy because they're unfulfilled because they had a vision of reality of what their life could be and it's just not that thing. And instead of being swept under by the depression of that situation, they see an opportunity. Right? They see the thing that at their work, they, this is what the customer wants, but we're not building it because the opportunity is too small. Or it's in a slightly different market. Or it's too, you know, it just doesn't quite fit what that business does. And they know how to do it. They know what the customer once, right? And they say, I'm going to start a business that does that thing. I'm going to go apply my talents and I'm going to create a business that fulfills this hole in the market. And that work might be harder. It might be more stressful. It might be riskier. But there's a reason why most people that start their own business say that they would never go back. That they would never go back. And we're going to talk about two of these main drivers. And if you fit these main drivers, you're going to know that you should eventually, or you should plan on, or you should create a timetable and a roadmap of when you will become your own boss, right? Because that's, that's the first thing. They, you see that opportunity. The number one piece that people say is, they want to become their own boss. I mean, I hear it a lot, but I don't think that being your own boss is a thing, right? I think people lack the vocabulary to understand what being your own boss means. I think the sentiment is more adequately described as gaining freedom over your life, being the engineer of your own life. When you start a business, you answer to everyone, customers, employees, partners, investors. They all have a list of needs. It's all on you. You have to do it. But before you only had one boss, maybe you had a couple bosses and your business was kind of in flux, but now everyone's your boss. So why is it better? Because you have the ability to change. You have the freedom to walk away, to change their business model, to fire employees, find a new vendor, you have the ability to take control. So if you set up a bad situation, it's on you. You've done it. 
you're the boss. You've created that situation. You can create freedom. You can create another job. But the fulfillment is in, is in that you're executing your plan. Even if things are harder, even if there's a lot of problems that you have to deal with, firefight, that might seem out of your control, at least it's all because of you. And that stress is your own stress, like something that you've caused, and you have the ability to make it go away with, with clever decisions, thoughtful action. But either way, it still feels more fulfilling than going to a job that has any level of stress that's outside of your control. At least now, more of your life is in that side of that locus of control. And I think that is a big driver and a lure to people. So when they say, become my own boss, they really mean is, you're going to create freedom and accountability in your own life. And if you can come to terms with that, you're one step closer to quitting your job and being your own boss. If you realize that everything's your fault and that's okay, and that's what you signed up for, you're that one step closer. The next big reason that people talk about is that they want to follow their passion. And uh, this is frustrating on multiple levels because it's another kind of popular saying that's also not really that well-defined, right? Uh, people confuse, uh, they conflate hobbies with passion, like collecting toy trains, yeah, that could be a hobby, but very rarely is that going to be the intersection of your passion and meet your personal goals and create the fulfillment that you want in your life. And that's really what people mean by passion is I can have passion for a group of people. Like I have a passion for helping entrepreneurs and startups that are founded by technical people and uh, working through the business end of that and bringing their products to the market. Uh, is it um, you know simple? Is it easy? Is it stress-free? It's none of those things. But I have a passion to work with these people, and those problems aside, I can set them aside and say, like, this is what I find very fulfilling. I like to make cool stuff. That's a personal mission of mine. And by working with these people, I fulfill my mission, I work with a group of people that I'm passionate about, a group of people that can pay me to do those things, I can find my personal purpose in, in doing that, right? And that, I can align those things with my business, and that is, <laughs> that's my, me following my passion, right? I'm not like going to create a comic book store because I like comic books. I mean, you, you can if you want but you'll find out that liking comics and running a comic book store have very little overlap in, except for in the inventory, right? Totally different things. Um, I, th I think another way that people mean follow their passion is really, it's like the Steve Jobs make a dent in the universe, right? You, you are highly motivated you're on that mission, you have that personal alignment, and you want to see this thing through, right? You want to see an idea happen. You want to see a part of the world change for the better. You want to create a better life for your family. You want to create um, some kind of, like, acknowledgement or so something. You want to see change in your personal life, and there's very few vehicles that allow you to achieve that, um, better than, than entrepreneurship, right? So dis, despite what people think, right, understand that the overwhelming majority of millionaires and billionaires in the United States are self-made, right? Over 60% of the billionaires in the United States came from nothing. That's, that's amazing, right? Um, the even higher percentage of millionaires in the United States have come from nothing. Now, there's a lot of millionaires that have become millionaires because of, of property investing, because of really high, highly paid jobs, so not necessarily entrepreneurship. 
there's definitely no billionaires that got a highly paid job and became a billionaire. You don't, it's, it's impossible. You can get paid a million dollars a year and you'll never become a billionaire. Right. So, um, understand that passion component, right? What we're really talking about when we talk about passion is to do something fulfilling, to make a dent in our lives and the world. And we're talking about learning at that accelerated pace, right? We can hit that that's kind of static, diminishing returns point in our corporate career and say, I, but I love doing this thing. I want to learn more. I want to take it to the limit. I really like this aspect of my job and I want to learn the most about it. I want to scale my impact on this community, uh, this group of customers, or this industry, or, you know, this problem. And creating a business allows you to do that, right? It allows you to learn and develop a system to increase your impact on the world. So when is it time? You have the I want to be my own boss mindset where you understand that it's really a, it's about accountability and freedom. And then you have the desire to do something fulfilling, to test yourself, to grow, to make a dent, and do something that's worthwhile. You have those two pieces. When is it time to move on? Now, you can consider building a side gig, and there's a lot of business types that you could, you could just start as a freelancer, right? That's going to give you, it's going to give you a lot of the tools or understanding. Maybe you're going to learn how to run books, communicate with people, do marketing, build a website. You're going to learn a lot of pieces, components of that admin level of doing work that will serve you in any business that you start. So consider, consider creating a side gig to just, even just to practice running a business. What does that look like? What do the hours look like? What does customer communication look like? Are these really the kind of people that you want to serve? But when is it time? Number one, it's time when you have a runway. Save up money. Even if you're building a business that's going to get funding and your goal is, hey, I'm a startup, I'm going to be venture capital backed, have a personal runway so you can pay for six months or 12 months of your bills. Otherwise, you're going to make bad decisions that are based on anxiety, fear, impatience. You're going to make decisions that are rash and they're based on your personal need versus the business need. And that's, that is a recipe for failure. So build up that runway, figure out what that is. Maybe you have to scale back a little bit, but if this business is worth it, if you believe in the idea, isn't it worth a little bit of sacrifice right now, savings right now to be able to fulfill your dreams down the road. That makes sense. Uh, the second thing is get a mentor. You don't even have to start your business to then get, get the mentor. Go talk to somebody that's done what you're trying to do. There are two, three, five years ahead. They're that extra zero ahead. That's what I always say. Like if you're trying to create a six figure business and you say, Hey, if I can do $325,000, I can pay all my bills, and that's my break-even point. Go find somebody that's running a $3 million business, right? It's running a seven-figure business, and get some hints from them, right? Don't go and read everything that Elon Musk has said or somebody that is running a billion-dollar business or you know, running a 10-figure business, 11-figure business. They're advice is irrelevant to you. The way that they grew doesn't exist anymore and is probably irrelevant to your business requirements anyways be because of 
scale, because of history, because of industry, right? They're not you. You're not them. Uh, they are not your mentor, right? Watching YouTube videos of famous people is not mentorship. Going and talking to a local business owner that has more experience that will be your cheerleader, your your coach, your referee. They'll be the person that's saying, like, you're on to something. You're being dumb, right? This is how you do that, that will help, that will actually help you. That's what's valuable. Go out and get that mentor. And this third piece, I really deeply believe in it. This is how Red Blue Collective is constructed, is you need to develop a network, right? So the collective, but you need you need to have that professional network of people that you can rely on, that you can collaborate with, that you can do larger projects with. And this is how you're going to exponentially grow. You can do things that are much bigger than your, you know, three employee company because you can partner with other companies and move more quickly. But I want you to build a personal network, right? And this is a, it's a little aside here is that as you change your life, what's important to you and what you spend time on will change as well. And so maybe you need to have a different circle, an inner circle of business focused friends. They don't have to be in that industry. They don't have to be doing the exact same thing as you're doing, but someone to communicate with, to have fellowship with, bounce ideas off of, maybe collaborate with, create a winner circle. It's your inner circle of friends, colleagues, associates that you can get together, you can mastermind, you can say, hey, this is what's working for my, for my social media. Hey, did you see this thing? How's that going to impact our business based on these new privacy laws? Right? Did you see this new cybersecurity regulations coming through? What, what's that going to do? Hey, who do you guys use for logistics and warehousing? You know, just ask, ask some questions. There's some great groups online that are for this, but even if you join one of those groups online, make sure that you build a local version. Nothing beats face-to-face. -face. Nothing beats you know, sharing a meal with somebody, nothing, you know, having a drink with somebody, communicating uh, in real time. Uh, build that winner circle. If you have the runway, you have the mentor, and you have the winner circle, I, you combine that with the mindset of, that accountability and that passion, I don't think the idea matters. I don't think the economy matters, right? I don't think anything matters because you you, you're basically saying, I have all the support. I have all of the drive. What can possibly stop you? Um, once you have those things in place, yeah, it's time to quit. It's, it's time to go and move on. It's time to start that next chapter in life. It's time to build that business and put yourself out there. There's nothing that's going to happen where you couldn't just get another job. I think more and more people understand that. Maybe 30 years ago, 40 years ago, that gap in your corporate resume from IBM might be that, you know, that, uh, it might be that black letter. Right, you you would never, you'd never be able to be hired by a big corporation again. They'd say, "Why did you leave IBM?" Right, that place is amazing. And you'd say, ah, "You know, I quit, started my own company." Oh, we don't want any people like that here. And now people they job hop. Right, people are at jobs for three years, five years. There's nothing wrong with looking at a resume and saying that this person has. A side gig. They have their own business. They started their own business. There's nothing to prevent you from moving back and getting another job, right? But if you never take the risk and never take the chance, that feeling of, oh yeah, I could have done that is going to slowly evolve into the resentment of, oh yeah, I should have done that. 
And that's what you're going to feel like. Oh, yeah, I saw that opportunity. And just kind of brushing it off is going to be like, damn, I really wasted that opportunity. And I could have been a part of that thing. And you, you have to look at those opportunities. And when you're filled with certainty, even in these uncertain times, you have to know, do I hit these check boxes? It is time to act. It's time to move. We are in a season of change right now. And there's unbelievable opportunities out there. Unbelievable opportunities. There's companies that are faltering and people that are building amazing new businesses. There's big businesses that are innovating at levels that we haven't seen ever, and they're just scooping up massive market share, but there is an equal number. There's an army of entrepreneurs that are seeing the gaps. All of the, these problems become solutions, become businesses, and there is an army of people just attacking those new opportunities right now. So that could be you. If you are sitting at home listening to this, you're at the gym listening to this and thinking like, man, it's going to be in, it's going to be December or it's going to be January until I'm back in the office. Don't wait. Use this. This is like a once in a generation opportunity to be able to start your own thing. Start doing the research. Start reading the books, watching the YouTube videos, creating the plan, create a personal action plan because you might never go back to work and it might not even matter. That's end hype.